you can implement all the security you want and then uh and then you just use the uh the handgun approach of overcoming security and that is you put the handgun to somebody's head and you say type in your password you know so there's no such thing as security and so one of the challenges that you face in digital transformation and everybody who's watching here anyone who's involved in industry 4.0 anyone who's involved in trying to make non-digital companies digital companies has run into one of these barriers in the name of security okay we can't do that because our security policy says we can't or we we can't get that virtual machine spun up or that piece of software installed on this machine because it takes um you know it takes uh we have to check off a bunch of security boxes that don't even actually make us secure to begin with there's a there's a huge thing in industry 4.0 that most people don't talk about when it comes to security and that is opportunity cost in the in the name of security how much money we're losing in innovation and advancement and in our lack of unlocking potential from the plant floor in the name of security okay now i've been doing this a very long time okay i've been um, i'm 24 years into my career uh i've been working on bleeding edge projects most of my career i mean 20 years for sure um and i have never seen a major security breach that was not caused from the inside okay that is some idiot plugging a fob uh, a fob into the wrong usb port opening attachment in an email you're right you know id 10 t fault we called those id 10 t if you want to write them down it says it spells idiot right but over the radio, you don't say idiot. Over the radio, you say ID10T, right? Um, every major security breach that I ever saw came from the inside, right? That all the all the layers of security that we put into organizations, especially when we look at things like uh, DMZs, right? This is one of my biggest fucking pet peeves in the entire world. You know, a DMZ with BombGar for remote access to the plant floor is the big biggest piece of garbage solution work around end around that I've ever seen. And I want somebody, I want any developer, I want any engineer, controls engineer, developer to tell me, get on here and advocate for why the DMZ is important, number one. And number two, uh, 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 the access, the, the remote access you get to the plant floor through a DMZ is even effective at all it's not i mean i can't tell you how the number of projects that we have that we've had that have gone over budget because of insufficient remote access through the dmz through tools like bombgar okay uh which is basically using a jump server to you know basically i'm vnc'ing into a jump server right that has physical access to the plant floor it's it's useless okay you can't do any type of real development through that type of architecture to the point where in our statements of work, uh, we, we, we state that uh, we don't use that type of remote access. In, in most cases, what we're doing is we are talking our clients into allowing us to put our own virtual private network within their infrastructure and um, uh, just for our own development. And you know, sometimes they're getting it approved by IT. I'd say most of the time they're getting some stakeholder in IT to approve it. Um, and sometimes they're not, you know, I, I would say probably 80% of the time they're getting it approved, uh, with significant limitations, but whenever they have the IT department come in and have a conversation with us about, you know, why it is you can't do something because of security reasons. The first thing that I say is, well, let me use this example right now. Do you know how rare it is for a child to get kidnapped? But if you ask, if you ask the average parent, like what's the biggest risk they have for their child, you know, they're going to say that their biggest fear is going to be something like their kid getting kidnapped while they're playing in the front lawn. Like if you look today, me growing up, you know, all you Gen, Gen Xers out there, we used to, I would leave my house at eight o'clock in the morning. Um, I'd come back for lunch and then I would come back for dinner 
Um, and then I would come back as soon as the street light turned on. And, and I grew up in the country, but in the trailer park I grew up in, we actually had a street light, a street lamp. So as soon as the light got dark enough, when that light came on and we saw it, all the kids in the trailer park knew that they had to go back to uh, home, right? Gen, Gen Xers, if you're a Gen Xer, right, that's the way you came up. Like your parents saw you in the summertime, they saw you four times a day, and you went three or four hours, five hours uninterrupted without your parents knowing anywhere where you were, okay? You don't see that today at all, and you wonder why, right? Is it because we just have this explosion of pedophiles and people snatching kids up off the street? No, there aren't more people kidnapping kids today than there were in the 1980s. There are fewer, okay? There are fewer incidents, and it's not because of access. It's fewer incidents, rates per capita, okay? This is part of the violent crime drop that we've had over time. But if you ask people, is it more dangerous today? Is it more dangerous today than it was when we were coming up? They would say yes. And what's changed? It's really the perception, right? We shine a light on it. Every time that there's a kid who gets snatched up or attempted to get snatched up, which is a horrible thing, it's a terrible thing, right? We, every parent believes, well, what we have to do is just never, ever allow my child outside in the front yard without me standing right next to them, right? We never weigh the cost of that, right? Their kid doesn't learn any independence. Their kid doesn't learn how to interact with their peers without adults manipulating the interactions. I mean, we no, no one talks about the negative impacts of standing next to a child helicoptering 24 hours a day, seven days a week because of the minuscule risk that they might get snatched up by some kidnapper. Okay. That is the that is the metaphorical equivalent to what we see within manufacturing IT departments today. It's it's literally the same equivalent. We we put in unbelievable hurdles. In fact, we we damage our organizations through opportunity cost by uh, be, uh, uh, because of the minuscule fear that some bad actor is going to do something horrible to us. The minuscule fear. And here's my point. My organization is wide open. Okay. I practice what I preach in terms of security policies. Now I know the number of um, bots out there that are, you know, pinging every port on our, on our, public IPs. I know I know the number of Russian hackers out there that are just scanning the internet for stupid people who use dumb passwords that use that don't do software updates, right? I know the number, we see it. We use some AI software to basically just keep us informed about the number of bad actors out there who are trying to, you know, see if we're dumb. That's basically what they're checking. They're checking to see are you stupid?